Miali was 28 when she married her colleague, Ken Wei, from the publishing house. Ken Wei was 35, divorced, and had an eight-year-old daughter. Everyone said Miao, Li was like a flower planted in a pile of dung, but she enjoyed it wholeheartedly. Their relationship, from colleagues to marriage, began during the years after Ken Wei's divorce. Ken Wei's daughter, Ken Xiaoxian, was four when his wife had an affair, abandoning both her husband and child to run off with a wealthy lover. This scandal was a hot topic in the publishing house's break room and cafeteria for a while. People joked that Ken Wei, being a quiet, unromantic, and rather dull man, was bound to be cheated on sooner or later. Miali didn't join in on the gossip, partly because they both worked in the ancient books department and she felt it inappropriate to talk about a colleague behind his back. Later, due to Ken Xiaoxuan's unexpected entrance into her life, Miao Li's relationship with the father and daughter began to change in unpredictable ways. After the divorce, Ken Wei took care of his daughter on his own, juggling both work and parenting, which became much harder for him. Just picking up his daughter from kindergarten and rushing to work on time was a challenge. All the other colleagues in the ancient books department were already married with children, busy with their own lives, and couldn't help him out. It all started when a colleague offhandedly said, Miao Li, since you're free now, why don't you help Ken Wei pick up Xiao Xian from kindergarten? Gradually and somewhat inexplicably, taking care of Ken Xiao Xian became part of Miao Li's routine. Whenever Ken Wei was busy, Miao Li would pick Xiao Xian up after school, bring her to the office, and sit her at a small desk prepared with a comic book or puzzle. Xiao Xian would quietly read or play puzzles, waiting for the adults to finish work. When work was over, the three of them would have dinner together, as Miao Li found eating alone boring and wasteful. Sometimes, when Ken Wei was away on business, with no one to look after Xiao Xian, Miao Li would take her to her own home, taking care of her, telling bedtime stories, making sure she was dressed warmly, and tucking her in at night. To express his gratitude, Ken Wei would always bring Miao Li small gifts and insist on treating her to meals. Miao Li couldn't find a reason to refuse, especially since Xiao Xian had grown more and more attached to her, even refusing to eat when she wasn't around. Initially, Miao Li had seen Ken Wei as a quiet, introverted man with little interest in socializing or career advancement, content to immerse himself in ancient texts and archives. Now, after getting to know him better, that impression hadn't changed, but she had also discovered his deep passion for ancient books and the understated romance beneath his reserved exterior. It was this love for literature that had led Miao Li to become an editor in the first place. But when Ken Wei would passionately read her excerpts from the Book of Songs, emotions rarely seen in him would slowly flow through the ancient poetry, rich, deep, and intense, hidden beneath the weariness of middle age. It often moved her to tears. Their relationship naturally progressed, but Miao Li knew her parents wouldn't approve of her choice. So, she and Ken Wei secretly registered their marriage. By the time her parents found out, it was too late to do anything but throw a fit. Miao Li moved into Ken Wei's home, and Ken Xiaoxian was the happiest of all, running around helping carry small items, sweating from the effort. That night, as Miao Li and Ken Wei sat on the terrace under the moonlight, Ken Wei said, Thank you. And then, I'm sorry, his voice thick with emotion. Miao Li responded by squeezing his hand, silently assuring him that there was no need for an apology. She was truly happy. Then, Ken Xiaoxian ran over, wedging herself between the two. She looked seriously at Miao Li and asked, Auntie Miao, are you my dad's wife now? Miao Li stroked Xiao Xuan's head and smiled gently. Yes. Do you have something you want to say to me? Xiao Xian lowered her head, thinking for a moment. When she looked up again, there was a mix of timidity and hope in her eyes. Can I call you mom from now on? Miao Li's eyes instantly filled with tears. Ken Wei had told her before that, Ever since the divorce, Xiao Xuan's mother had never returned to visit. Xiao Xian barely had any memory of her and often envied the children at her kindergarten who had mothers to call. Miao Li hugged Xiao Xuan's soft little shoulders, her voice choked, Of course you can. I'll be your mom from now on. Xiao Xuan's face lit up and she solemnly called, Mom. Hmm. Miao Li responded just as earnestly, kissing Xiao Xian on the forehead. Ken Wei's eyes had already reddened. He quickly wiped away his tears with the back of his hand and wrapped his arms around this mother and daughter pair. Their little family of three lived happily together for three years and two months. Miali would never forget that day, the last day of May, when she saw two lines on the pregnancy test. 
Her heart raced with excitement as she checked it over and over again. Finally, she placed it on Kenway's bedside table, planning to surprise him. After three years of marriage, her belly had shown no signs of life, and both of them had been getting anxious. Kenway had quit smoking and drinking, and Yali had consumed endless amounts of traditional Chinese medicine to improve her chances. Even little Ken Xiaoxin joined in, knowing how bitter the medicine tasted, and would always leave a piece of candy next to her mother's bowl. Today was the day Ken Wei was returning from a business trip. How happy would he be when he found out this good news? Miao Li checked the time. Ken Wei should have landed by now. Just as she was about to call him, an unfamiliar number popped up on her phone. Hello, who is this? Miao Li instinctively answered, but in the next moment, she felt as if she had been struck by lightning. Her entire body froze, her face turned as pale as paper, and her lips began to tremble uncontrollably. There had been a car accident on the airport expressway. The taxi that Kenway had been in was involved, and he was currently being rushed to the city hospital for emergency treatment. Miaoli snapped out of her shock, grabbed her phone, and rushed out the door. It was the evening rush hour, and no taxis were available. The streets were clogged with traffic. Desperate, Miao Li's eyes darted around. Not far away, she spotted a shared bike parked under a sycamore tree, and a high school boy was about to scan the QR code to unlock it. Without thinking, Miao Li dashed over. I'm so sorry, can I have the bike? It's an emergency, really urgent. Her mind was as chaotic as the traffic, and she was already speaking incoherently. The boy looked startled, but nodded. Before he could even react, Miao Li had already grabbed the bike and pedaled away. But the next second, the boy heard the sound of a collision. Miali had been hit by an electric bike. In the rush hour, traffic moved slowly and in normal circumstances, it would have just been a minor accident with both parties quickly moving on to avoid causing a scene. However, the sudden rear-end collision caused the shared bike to fall and Miali's abdomen slammed into the handlebars. A sharp, searing pain tore through her and a warm sensation spread through her body. It felt as though she had stepped off a cliff, and she began to fall into darkness. On that last day of May, Miaoli lost both her husband and the child growing in her womb. The days that followed were a blur. She kept the curtains in her bedroom tightly closed, relying on strong sleeping pills to spend her days in a dreamlike haze. The immense, dual blow had crushed her. She retreated to her most primal instincts, hiding away in the dark, cave-like depths of her bedroom, shutting out the world and licking her wounds in solitude. In the dim space between dreams and reality, Miali often felt the presence of two figures, one big, one small, silently coming and going from her bedroom. Sometimes, they stood by her bedside together, looking down at her. Fragmented bits of conversation would occasionally reach her ears. Lear, how long are you going to keep this up? Miali could hear the heavy sigh and recognized it as her mother's voice. A small, cool hand rested on Miao Li's forehead, and she knew it was Ken Xiaoxian. The little girl leaned in close and whispered softly, Mom, you always told me that sleeping makes the sadness go away. Rest well, I'll take care of you. Xiaoxuan's sweet, childlike breath caressed Miao Li's ear, causing her eyelashes to flutter. But her mother's deep sigh echoed once again. Child, she's no longer your mother. You have your own mother. Xiaoxuan's voice sharpened with defiance. She is my mother. She always will be. Her mother shook her head and sighed once more. The next morning, Miao Li felt something was wrong. She suddenly grew tired of her self-imposed cave and emerged from her bedroom. Where's Xiao Xian? She asked immediately. Her mother's eyes flickered with unease. Her her mother came to take her. Xiao Xuan's mother? The woman who had never once shown up? Miao Li couldn't believe it. She glared at her mother and demanded, Why? Why did you let her take Xiao Xian? Miao Li's mother had always disapproved of her marriage. Her only thought now was to pull Miao Li out of her grief and help her move on. Facing Miao Li's anger, she met her daughter's gaze, determined to make her see reason. Miao Li, what right do you have to yell at me? Wake up. Kan Wei is gone. And where else is Xiao Xian supposed to go but to her real mother? Her logic was airtight, leaving Miao Li with nothing to argue. She stood there in stunned silence for a long time before muttering through gritted teeth, You told Xiaoxuan's mother, didn't you? Miao Li's mother shrugged slightly, neither confirming nor denying it. The company gave Miao Li a month off, but she returned to work after just a week. 
Without Ken Wei and Ken Xiaoxian at home, the emptiness of the house was unbearable. She couldn't stand staying there for even a minute longer. Every day, she threw herself into work, trying desperately to drown out her pain. In moments of distraction, Miaoli would often find herself staring at her phone in a daze. A long time ago, Miaoli had made sure that Xiaoxian memorized both her and Ken Wei's phone numbers. She had told her that if there was ever any problem, she should call them immediately. Miaoli was waiting for Xiaoxuan's call. But after a month, she still hadn't heard that familiar, sweet little voice. She had tried calling Xiaoxuan's phone, but it was no longer in service. Had Xiaoxuan's mother changed her number? Why would she do that? After years of barely being involved in her daughter's life, why the sudden urgency to change Xiaoxuan's phone number? Unable to make sense of this question, Miaoli set it aside, only to be hit with another wave of guilt. Kenwei had just passed away, and she had sent Xiaoxian away. If Kenwei knew, how heartbroken would he be? And what did that make her, Miaoli? Whenever she thought about it, it felt like a heavy stone was pressing down on her chest, making it hard to breathe. Miaoli had already found out where Xiaoxuan's mother was living in Haiching. She had thought about going to see Xiaoxian. But in what capacity would she go? What right did she have to face Xiaoxian now? Every time she thought about it, shame consumed her, and she felt utterly worthless. Then there were her parents. Over three years ago, when she married Kenwei, they had been deeply disappointed in her. Now, after everything that had happened, her father was not only angry and upset, but had also fallen seriously ill. How could she bear to cause them more pain? As Miaoli struggled with these thoughts, two months passed in a haze. During a department meeting, when the team leader mentioned, there's an author living in Haiching. We need to meet in person to discuss the topic. Miaoli was suddenly jolted from her stupor. I'll go, she blurted out, cutting off the team leader mid-sentence. Everyone stared at her in surprise. Realizing her outburst, Miaoli stood up awkwardly and said earnestly, team leader, please let me go. The team leader was momentarily taken aback, but then smiled. That works. You could use this trip to clear your head a bit. Miaoli had always known deep down that after Xiaoxian had called her mom for three years and two months, she couldn't just turn the page as if nothing had happened. She had to see with her own eyes how Xiaoxian was doing. It was something she owed her conscience, and something she owed to Ken Wei. When Miaoli stood at the door, carrying bags of gifts, and saw the stylish but exhausted-looking middle-aged woman in front of her, she instinctively knew it was Xiaoxuan's mother. Xiaoxuan's mother looked at Miao Li in surprise. After Miao Li explained her reason for coming, her tense expression softened a little, and she even adopted a more relaxed demeanor, though subtly. Her warmth caught Miao Li off guard, leaving her somewhat flustered. Surrounded by coffee, fruits, and snacks, Miaoli took a moment to observe the spacious, luxurious four-bedroom apartment. The decor was extravagant, with everything glimmering and the space wide open. Compared to this place, the small 80-square-meter apartment she had shared with Ken Wei seemed pitifully modest. Her gaze wandered toward the four closed doors, wondering which room belonged to Xiaoxian. As if in response to her thoughts, three doors opened in succession. First, a pair of six- or seven-year-old twins, a boy and a girl who looked as perfect as dolls, then a middle-aged man pinching the bridge of his nose stepped out. Miaoli glimpsed the study behind him and recognized its furnishings. Xiaoxuan's mother eagerly went over to him. Hungry? I bake some bread. The twins clung to their mother, asking for bread, but Xiaoxuan's mother only focused on her husband, doting on him like a servant trying to please her master. The man shook his head indifferently, his eyes sliding past his wife to glance briefly at Miao Li. Just as she stood up to greet him, his haughty gaze skimmed over her, and he called for the children as he opened the door and left. It's okay, sit down and drink some coffee, Xiao Xuan's mother said awkwardly, rubbing her hands. But Miao Li couldn't sit any longer. I want to see Xiao Xian, she said directly. Xiao Xuan's small room was next to the kitchen. It used to be a windowless storage room. All Xiaoxuan's mother had done was push the clutter to the corners, squeeze in a single bed and a desk. Even in the middle of the day, a small desk lamp was on in Xiaoxuan's room. Seeing the frail figure hunched over the desk, Miao Li's eyes instantly welled up with tears, and her breath caught. She called out softly, Xiaoxian. Xiaoxian didn't move, but her small body visibly tensed. Miao Li raised her voice, Xiaoxian. Xiaoxian stood up and turned to look at Miao Li. In the dim light, 
It was hard to see her expression. Come, let mommy give you a hug, Miali said, opening her arms, the years of being a mother making her act instinctively. Shai Xian clasped her hands behind her back, as if forcing herself not to run forward. In a quiet voice, she said, Hello, Auntie Miao. It was like a slap to Miao Li's face, her cheeks burning with shame. She awkwardly lowered her arms, not knowing what to do. But within a moment, she pulled herself together and began unpacking the gifts she had brought, showing them to Xiao Xian one by one. In the past, these exquisite gifts would have had Xiao Xian rushing into her arms, calling mom, over and over again. But now, things were different. Xiao Xian accepted each gift like a student receiving an exam paper from a teacher, politely thanking her each time. The coldness sent a chill through Miao Li's heart. She must hate me, Miao Li thought to herself, overwhelmed by a mixture of helplessness and sorrow. But then, something caught her eye. Miao Li suddenly grabbed Xiao Xian and pulled her into the light. There was a dark stain on Xiao Xuan's pants, it was blood. Miao Li instantly recognized it as menstrual blood. Xiao Xian had reached menarchy, and her mother hadn't even noticed. A rush of emotions, pain and anger, surged through Miao Li's heart. She held back her rage and pulled Xiao Xian into her arms, speaking in the familiar, gentle tone they used to share. Xiao Xian, do you remember how mommy used to tell you that girls around 11 or 12 start their periods? It means you've grown up, you're a young woman now. Miao Li's tenderness finally broke down the walls Xiao Xian had built around her fragile pride. Memories of the happy times with both her mom and dad flooded back, and large tears began rolling down her cheeks. She bit her lip and nodded. And, do you remember how mommy taught you to use a sanitary pad? Miao Li asked, holding back her own tears. Xiao Xian nodded again. Miao Li reached into her bag and pulled out a sanitary pad. Now, go change into clean clothes, okay? Mommy will wait for you outside. As Miao Li stood up to leave, Xiao Xian grabbed her hand, looking up at her with pleading eyes. She whispered, Mommy? Miao Li froze. That one word, filled with so much yearning, shattered all her doubts from the past two months. In that instant, she made up her mind. She knelt down in front of Xiao Xian. Do you want to come home with mommy? Xiao Xian nodded vigorously. Then pack your things and wait for mommy, Miao Li said, wiping away the tears from Xiao Xuan's face. When Miao Li stepped out of Qin Xiao Xuan's room, she saw Xiao Xuan's mother standing outside, clearly having eavesdropped the entire time. By now, Miao Li's anger had dissipated, and she wasn't bothered by the fact that Xiao Xuan's mother had been listening in. What was on her mind now was how to convince Xiao Xuan's mother to let her take Xiao Xian away. However, it turned out to be far simpler than she had imagined. Seeing how close her daughter and Miao Li were, Xiao Xuan's mother almost sighed with relief. Before Miao Li could even bring up a request, Xiao Xuan's mother eagerly started talking about her own struggles. When she remarried her current husband, she had promised him that she would cut ties with her past. Now, with Qin Xiao Xian suddenly thrown back into her life, it made things incredibly difficult for her. Although her husband hadn't said much yet, it was clear he was giving her time to sort things out. His stance was firm, there was no way they could keep Xiao Xian. And Xiao Xian? She had a strange temperament. Ever since she was brought back, she hadn't called her mother once, nor had she spoken to anyone in the family. She would only come out for meals and spent the rest of her time hiding in the small, windowless room. On top of that, Xiao Xian even had violent tendencies. Once, her younger brother accidentally broke her phone, and she hit him so hard that it left a cut on his forehead. All of this made the family atmosphere unbearable, and every day felt like an ordeal for Xiao Xuan's mother. She went on and on about her difficulties, as Miao Li took in the lavish four-bedroom apartment once again. Despite the grand space, there was no place for her biological daughter here. Xiao Xuan's mother and her husband, though legally married with two children of their own, were still living in constant tension, trying to please her husband, and had no real standing in the household. In her heart, Miao Li felt grateful she had come at the right time. Who knew what kind of treatment Xiao Xian would have endured if she had arrived any later? When Xiao Xuan's mother, with a hint of embarrassment, hesitantly offered to pay part of Xiao Xuan's child support, Miao Li noticed Xiao Xian standing at the door with her backpack and suitcase, looking over and calling out, Mom, are we leaving? Miao Li saw the instant change in Xiao Xuan's mother's expression, her face going rigid. With a smile, Miao Li stood up. There's no need. Xiao Xian and I can manage. 
She waved to Xiaoxian, just as she had countless times before when picking her up from school. And just as before, Xiaoxian smiled brightly, walking over to place her small hand into Miao Li's. It was the first time Xiaoxuan's mother had seen her daughter smile, but that smile wasn't meant for her. On the high-speed train ride home, Miao Li held Xiaoxian close and asked, Your phone was broken and I couldn't contact you. But if you were unhappy, why didn't you call me? That way, I could have come to get you sooner. Sniffling, Xiaoxian replied with a hint of grievance. Grandma said I should be with my birth mom and not be a burden to you. She lifted her face, her expression serious, and asked, Mom, will I be a burden to you? Looking at Xiaoxian, Miao Li solemnly promised, Never. Soon after returning, Miao Li noticed that Xiaoxian had changed. She was no longer the little girl who used to act spoiled in front of her parents. In just two months, she had grown up. Now, she rode her bike to and from school on her own, no longer asking Miao Li to pick her up. Every night after finishing her homework, she would tidy her desk and room, throw dirty clothes into the laundry basket, and even do the laundry, hang it up, and dry it herself. When Miao Li worked late, there was always a light on waiting for her at home. Xiaoxian would greet her at the door, taking her bag and offering her slippers. Xiaoxian even learned to make simple meals like porridge, noodles, and boiled eggs. On weekends, when Miao Li slept in, she would wake up to find a hot bowl of porridge and eggs waiting for her on the table. Miao Li's parents would occasionally come over. Initially, they were firmly against her bringing Xiaoxian back and didn't like the child at all. But, as elders are often soft-hearted, they couldn't resist Xiaoxuan's repeated calls of grandpa and grandma. Gradually, they came to appreciate her cleverness and maturity. Eventually, they resigned themselves to the reality that perhaps Miao Li was destined to be Xiaoxuan's stepmother. After all, how could even her biological mother fail to separate them? They sighed, accepting their fate. One evening, while Miao Li was staying up late to work, her stomach growled in hunger. Unwilling to spend money on takeout, she decided to make some instant noodles. Just as she was about to step out of her room, she saw Xiaoxian standing at the door with a steaming bowl of noodles. Mom, are you hungry? I made you some noodles, Xiaoxian exclaimed excitedly. Wiping the sweat from Xiaoxuan's forehead, Miao Li felt both heartache and warmth. How did you know I was hungry? Without hesitation, Xiaoxian replied, Dad used to make you noodles when you worked late at night. He said you were worried about gaining weight, so the noodles had to be a small portion. But since you were staying up late, he added an egg for nutrition. And he said you liked looking pretty, so he made sure to include some vegetables for vitamins. As Xiaoxian continued to talk, Miao Li found herself in tears. In that moment, it became clear to her why Xiaoxian had changed so much over these past few weeks. She had realized her father was gone, and she felt it was her responsibility to take care of her mother, to do what she could in their home. Miao Li's parents accepting Kan Xiaoxian didn't mean they would let Miao Li continue without pressure. In fact, their acceptance of Kan Xiaoxian came with a condition. Miao Li had to start dating and prepare herself for another marriage. As for remarriage, Miao Li hadn't seriously considered it yet. For one, she still couldn't let go of her feelings for Kan Wei. Additionally, after what happened last time when Xiaoxian was sent away, she could sense Xiaoxuan's lack of security. She didn't want to hurt her daughter again. But her parents' suggestion was something she neither dared nor could refuse. Whether it was about Kenwei before or Ken Xiaoxian now, her parents had made the biggest concessions. Miao Li couldn't bear to go against them any longer. So, Miao Li discussed it with her parents and agreed that the topic of dating and remarriage could be postponed until after Xiaoxian finished elementary school. Her parents agreed. Time flew by, and soon Xiaoxian was in middle school. Miao Li's mother, who had been ready and waiting, now activated all her connections to introduce potential suitors for her daughter with full force. Miao Li couldn't withstand her mother's relentless bombardment, so whenever she had the time, she would meet someone. Miao Li didn't plan to deliberately hide her dating from Xiaoxian, but she hadn't figured out how to explain it yet. With her busy work schedule, it kept getting delayed. However, Miao Li underestimated how sensitive teenage girls could be. Xiaoxian quickly sensed that something was off with Miao Li. After secretly following her a couple of times, she discovered her mother's secret. Miao Li was dating behind her back, which awakened the insecurity buried deep within Xiaoxian. She had considered that Miao Li would eventually get married again. 
But that thought had always remained in a distant future that she subconsciously rejected, one she believed might never come. Now that maybe had turned into reality. What's more, Miali had done it behind her back. Along with a sense of betrayal, Xiaoxian also felt lost. If Miali really got married and had her own children, what would happen to her? Would her grandmother send her away again, just like when her father passed away? She would never go back to her biological mother, but where else could she go? A few years ago, when Xiaoxian was brought back into Miao Li's life, her little heart had changed. She knew that if she didn't want her mother to be troubled in front of her grandparents, she needed to become a helpful person at home, not a burden to her mother. So, she worked hard at school and did whatever chores she could. But now, Xiaoxian was beginning to realize that all her efforts and maturity seemed insignificant in the face of adult decisions. Her fate, much like it was years ago, could still be altered by any sudden change. Years ago, it was her father's death. Now, the next upheaval would be the man who would soon enter her mother's life. Realizing this, Xiaoxian became a different person. She stopped talking as much, often locking herself in her room, staring blankly at her textbooks. Miaoli, caught between working overtime and dating, didn't notice the changes in her daughter. On Thursday night, Miaoli finally had some free time, so she called her parents over for a family dinner. At the table, Miaoli asked Xiaoxian about school. Xiaoxian responded lazily, giving a couple of vague answers as she listlessly pushed the rice around her bowl. Sensing something was wrong, Miaoli assumed she was sick and reached out to feel her forehead. Xiaoxian quickly dodged her mother's hand, shaking her head. I'm fine, she muttered gloomily. Miao Li's mother slammed her chopsticks on the table, her face stern. What's with your attitude? Your mom is talking to you, and this is how you behave. Ever since Xiao Xian had re-entered the family, Miao Li's mother had been stricter with her than most grandmothers would be. She felt Xiao Xian should wear her gratitude on her sleeve. Xiao Xian acted like she hadn't heard her grandmother's scolding. She quietly put down her chopsticks, whispered, I'm full and turned to go back to her room, leaving the three adults staring at each other in silence. Miao Li's mother, feeling disrespected, grew even angrier and started venting her frustrations on Miao Li. What's with her attitude? I told you, she's like a wolf cub you can't raise. Just look at her. Miao Li's father tried to calm things down. Come on, she's still a child. But Miao Li's mother seized the moment. That's why, Lear, you need to get married soon. You can always rely on your own children. Look at this mother-daughter situation. You never know when it could all fall apart. Miali cut her off sharply. Mom, what nonsense are you talking about? But by then, Xiaoxian had already heard everything. She curled up in her bed, clutching a photo of her father, sobbing softly. From outside the door, she could hear a knock. Normally, at this time, Miali would bring in a glass of milk, watch her drink it, and then leave. To make Miali happy, even when she didn't feel like it, Xiao Xian would pretend to enjoy the milk. But tonight, she wanted to be selfish for once. Locked outside, Miaoli hesitated over whether to unlock the door with her key. After a moment of indecision, she gave up. She had a faint sense of why Xiao Xuan's mood had shifted so drastically. Miaoli sent a text to cancel the date her mother had arranged for her the next evening. The next morning, Miaoli noticed the redness around Ken Xiao Xuan's eyes, but Knowing how strong her daughter's pride was, she chose not to say anything. As they walked downstairs together, just like always, Miaoli affectionately put her arm around Xiao Xuan's shoulders, but she felt Xiao Xuan's reaction was a bit stiff. Downstairs, Xiao Xuan's deskmate, Shang Dongliang, was waiting on the street with his bike. He and Xiao Xian had always ridden their bikes to and from school together, and Miaoli had seen him many times before. Good morning, Auntie Miao, Shang Dongliang greeted politely then stared at Xiao Xuan's red eyes for a few seconds before jokingly saying, Xiao Xian, did a bee sting your eyes? Xiao Xian stayed silent, head down as she pushed her bike forward. Shang Dong Liang quickly followed. Xiao Xian, I'll pick you up from school this afternoon. Miao Li called after her, deciding that she would have a serious talk with Xiao Xian that evening. But her voice was soon drowned out by the bustling morning rush. Throughout the morning, Miali felt inexplicably anxious, her mind constantly flashing back to the image of Shai Xian. Something felt off. As if to confirm her unease, at 3 p.m., she received a call from Xiao Xuan's homeroom teacher. Xiao Xian and her deskmate, Zhang Dongliang, had both gone missing. Miali rushed to the school, 
stumbling in her haste. In the homeroom teacher's office, the first person she noticed was a middle-aged man sitting and reading a newspaper. He was tall and lean, with glasses, giving off a refined appearance. Miali guessed this was Sean Dolion's father, though she had never seen him at parent-teacher meetings before. The man stood up and extended his hand, revealing a pair of large hands with neatly trimmed nails. Miali remembered that Ken Xiaoxian had mentioned Shang Dolian's father was an orthopedic doctor. The man smiled at Miao Li and introduced himself, I'm Shang Dolian's father, Shang Yuzhou. Shang Yuzhou and Shang Dongliang. What peculiar names for a father and son, Miao Li thought briefly. But her mind quickly shifted back to her daughter, Xiaoxian. She was too exhausted and anxious to dwell on it. She gave a perfunctory handshake, I'm Ken Xiaoxuan's mother, Miao Li. Glancing at his relaxed expression, Miali couldn't help but feel curious. She blurted out, Aren't you worried that the kids have run away? Shang Yuzhou clicked his tongue with a bitter smile. My kid skipping school isn't exactly a first. Miali quickly interrupted. Then, do you know where they might be? Seeing the urgency and worry in Miao Li's eyes, Shang Yuzhou realized how serious the situation was. Scratching his temple, he cautiously replied, Maybe, but I'm not entirely sure. His phone is off. Xiao Xuan's phone isn't reachable either, Miao Li muttered, collapsing into a chair, covering her head with her hands as soft sobs escaped. It's my fault, all my fault. She realized that Xiao Xian must have found out about her dating and probably thought she no longer wanted her, leading her to run away. Miao Li's emotional outburst left Shang Yuzhou a bit flustered. He glanced at the tissue box on the table, unsure if he should offer it to her. Just then, the booming voice of the homeroom teacher filled the room. Dr. Shang, you must be a very busy man. I've never seen you at the parent-teacher meetings. Shang Yuzhou awkwardly rubbed his hands and chuckled. There were emergency surgeries both times. I couldn't get away. Don't worry, teacher. I'll definitely attend next time. The homeroom teacher adjusted her glasses and sighed deeply, clearly disappointed in Shang Yuzhou. It's exactly because of irresponsible parents like you, who don't try to understand their children, that there's this growing distance between parent and child. Based on Miao Li's knowledge of this teacher, she could lecture for two hours straight if no one interrupted her. Miao Li quickly cut in, Teacher, the priority now is finding the kids. Shang Yuzhou echoed her urgency. Yes, yes. My son usually goes to his grandfather's old house in the countryside when he skips school. We should go check there. Miali shot a glance at Shang Yuzhou, who remained composed, as if they had already agreed on the plan. The homeroom teacher waved them off, then hurry up and go. Two hours later, Miali indeed found the children at a farmhouse in the countryside. The yard was dappled with tree shadows, lush flowers, and fruit trees, a vivid scene of summer vitality. Under the shade of a tree, Ken Xiaoxian and Shang Dongliang sat side by side on a swing, legs crossed, leisurely swaying back and forth. Each held a cucumber in hand, looking completely at ease. Seeing Xiao Xian relaxing and eating a cucumber while she had been worrying frantically, Miao Li felt a surge of anger. She stormed into the yard, raising her voice. Xiao Xian, what are you doing here? Xiao Xian froze, instinctively hiding the cucumber behind her back. Shang Dongliang, known as the class troublemaker, had poor grades and was designated as a student in need of extra help. The homeroom teacher had purposely seated him next to Ken Xiaoxian, hoping she could help him improve. Surprisingly, it worked. Since becoming deskmates with Xiaoxian, Shang Dongliang had become much more well-behaved. The two had quickly become close friends, riding to and from school together every day, and Xiaoxian often confided in him when she had something on her mind. That morning, Ken Xiaoxian arrived at school with red-rimmed eyes and looked dejected throughout the morning. Upon learning why she was upset, Shang Dongliang had taken her to her grandparents' old house, a place Xiao Xian had never visited before. This is your first time skipping school. Where did you learn this from? Miali said, rolling up her sleeves and approaching with an unprecedented sternness, making Xiao Xian instinctively shrink back. Your phone is still off? Do you want to give me a heart attack? Will you do this again next time? Will you? Miali reached out to grab Xiao Xian, but Xiao Xian took a step back, and Shang Dongliang stepped in front of her blocking Miali. Auntie, Xiaoxian skipping school is wrong, but it's also your fault for deceiving her. Shang Dongliang said, standing firm with a serious expression, looking like a knight defending his friend. Miali was taken aback, 
not expecting this little guy to stand up for her daughter. Before Miao Li could respond, Zhang Dongliang continued, If you hadn't hidden the fact that you were going on dates, she wouldn't have been so upset. So you should apologize to Xiao Xian first. Miao Li clearly heard a suppressed chuckle from behind her. Her face alternated between red and white, and she stammered, A, hey, adult matters, don't concern you, you kids. But Shang Dongliang shot back, Finding a stepdad for Xiao Xian is just like my dad finding a stepmom for me. How can it not concern us? Miao Li bit her dry lip, turning stiffly to glare at Shang Yuzhou. Your son is helping my daughter skip school, and you're letting him get away with it? Only then did Shang Yuzhou saunter over holding a cucumber, looking as if he had no intention of intervening. All three of them turned to him, wondering what he would say. It's almost dinner time. Look at how well the vegetables and fruits have grown in this yard. Let's cook something, Shang Dongliang suggested. Miao Li was at her wit's end. This father and son duo was truly something else. Shang Yuzhou gave Shang Dongliang a light tap on the head with the cucumber, and when Shang Dongliang deftly dodged the next hit, Shang Yuzhou wiped the cucumber on his shirt, broke it in half, and handed a piece to Miao Li with a smile. It's getting congested in the city. Why don't we leave later? Besides, they're probably hungry. Since Xiao Xian hadn't eaten properly since last night, she was surely very hungry by now. Miao Li hesitated for a moment, then slowly accepted the cucumber. All right then. Shang Yuzhou took a bite of the cucumber and called out loudly, Shang Dongliang, if you don't want to be punished, you'd better make up for it by being diligent and picking some vegetables. Got it. Shang Dongliang grabbed a basket and headed into the vegetable garden, looking back to invite Xiao Xian to join him. Miao Li looked around the serene little courtyard but felt a gaze on her. Turning her head, she saw Shang Yuzhou, arms crossed, watching her with a curious expression. Miao Li suddenly remembered Shang Dongliang's earlier words. She swallowed, finding her throat dry, and felt uneasy all over, regretting agreeing to stay for dinner. From Shang Dongliang, Miao Li learned that this house had been bought by his grandparents with their life savings after they retired. They spent their days tending to the flowers, plants, and vegetables, enjoying a peaceful retirement. After Shang Yuzhou's divorce, he struggled to raise Shang Dongliang alone and eventually sent him to live with his grandparents. Shang Dongliang spent his entire elementary school years with them and developed a deep bond. After moving back to the city for middle school, he would frequently skip school to visit his grandparents. Two months ago, his grandparents passed away in their sleep, and now the vegetables and fruits they had planted continued to thrive in the garden, oblivious to their owner's departure. As Miali sat on the swing, gazing at the sparse stars in the night sky, she felt a deep sense of the world's impermanence. Shang Yujo called from the kitchen, dinner's ready. The table was filled with five dishes, and Miao Li was surprised at how efficiently Shang Yujo, a big man, managed the cooking better than she could. As they sat down to eat, Shang Yujo suddenly remembered something and went out. He returned shortly with a bottle of red wine. Miao Li was taken aback. We need to head back to the city soon. She had arrived in the city in Shang Yujo's car and would need his help to return. Shang Yujo looked at her calmly, as if he had planned this all along. I thought about it, and since tomorrow is Saturday, why don't we stay and spend the weekend here? He smiled slightly and then became serious again. Besides, we need to take some time to understand the deeper reasons behind these two kids skipping school, right? Ken Xiaoxian and Shang Dongliang, who were happily eating, immediately lowered their heads with worried expressions. However, Shang Yuzhou prolonged the word, making the two troubled students look up at him eagerly. Shang Yuzhou glanced at Miao Li and then at the kids. The spring mountains nearby are perfect for camping at this time of year. How about we have a family outing with picnics, fishing, and hiking while reflecting on things? Yay! Ken Xiaoxian and Shang Dongliang clapped and cheered. What was Shang Yuzhou's real intention? Miao Li couldn't help but study him closely. He was serving the kids' vegetables with a warm, comforting smile, looking like a good father. Sensing her gaze, Shang Yuzhou suddenly looked back, his bold and slightly amused eyes meeting hers. Miao Li felt her throat dry again. She awkwardly adjusted her hair and lowered her head to eat. The night grew darker, and the surrounding area was enveloped in a deep, quiet darkness. Even if she wanted to leave, finding a car would be difficult, and Ken Xiaoxian hadn't been this happy in a long time. If she insisted on leaving, it might only make her daughter more upset. Miao Li decided to spend the entire weekend with her daughter. 
At this moment, the two kids were playing games inside, and Shang Yujo was tidying up in the kitchen. Feeling a bit bored, Niali sat on the swing again, lost in thought as she gazed at the night sky. The surroundings were so quiet, with only the chirping of insects and the occasional distant barking of dogs, so different from the city's noise. Niali realized that she would always remember this tranquil and pleasant weekend. She heard footsteps behind her and recognized them as Shang Dongliang's. The uneasy feeling returned abruptly. Strange, Niali straightened her back and adjusted her posture, as if bracing herself for a confrontation. A glass of red wine was handed to her. On such a pleasant night, it would be a waste not to enjoy some wine, Shang Yujo said with a smile. Miali hesitated, but Shang Yujo seemed unbothered, maintaining a bold and sincere gaze. Miali took the glass and sipped, avoiding his gaze. She didn't expect his next question to almost make her spit out the wine. So, you are indeed on a date? Shang Yujo asked straightforwardly. So, he had been remembering Shang Dongliang's words all along? Miao Li's throat made a gulping sound. She forced herself to swallow the wine but ended up coughing violently, her eyes tearing up. After the coughing fit subsided, Shang Yujo pressed on. But I assume you haven't met the right person yet, have you? Miao Li tightened her grip on the glass, staring at Shang Yujo as if she didn't understand, though her dazed expression gave her away. How do you know? Miao Li asked, though she knew the question sounded silly. Shang Yujo shrugged with a satisfied smile. You exude a I'm single vibe all over. Miao Li was speechless. The alcohol seemed to dull her mind, leaving her confused and uncertain whether Shang Yujo was flirting or probing. She couldn't quite figure out if she was just being overly eager or if there was a deeper meaning behind his words. Her dazed expression made Shang Yujo laugh heartily. He seemed relieved, his mood improving instantly. He clinked his glass with hers and drank his wine in one gulp. Miali had an inkling about what was going on but dared not make assumptions, as they had only known each other for a few hours. But the answer would become clear the following evening. On Saturday morning, Miali was woken up by the chirping of birds. They flitted to the window, pecked at the window frame, and sang cheerfully, as if their sole purpose was to wake her. Feeling slightly dizzy, Miali wondered why she felt hungover despite only having three glasses of wine. She struggled out of bed, and walked out of the room. In the yard, there was a pile of gear, tents, folding chairs, fishing equipment, and cookware. Ken Xiaoxian and Shang Dongliang were eagerly helping Shang Yujo pack these items into the trunk. Mom, why are you up so late? We're about to leave, Ken Xiaoxian said, unable to hide her excitement. Miao Li remembered that, since the death of her husband, Ken Wei, she had been so busy that she hadn't had the chance to take Ken Xiaoxian camping. Sorry, sorry, I'll be ready soon, Miali said, hastily fixing her hair and searching for her toiletries, feeling a bit flustered. As the car started, the two kids in the back seat were like excited school children on a field trip, eagerly looking out the window and chattering away. In the front seat, Shang Yujo drove, his eyes focused on the road, while Miali, in the passenger seat, attended to his small needs, handing him tissues and a water bottle. It felt like a family outing. The thought of this made Miao Li feel uneasy again. She sat stiffly, as if her rigid posture could eliminate the subtle ambiguity in the car and place her and Shang Yujo back in the proper roles of schoolmate's parents. But Shang Yujo wasn't going to let her succeed so easily. A mischievous smile peeked out from behind his sunglasses. Did you sleep well last night? Shang Yujo asked casually, but with an intimate tone that suggested they were a couple, creating a natural illusion for others that they had spent the night together. Miao Li was momentarily stunned. Very, very well. She stammered, glancing nervously at the kids in the back seat, looking somewhat guilty. Seeing Miao Li's uncomfortable reaction, Shang Yujo felt as elated as the kids in the back seat. He was quite confident now. After a full day of hiking, they set up camp by Spring Lake in the evening. They cooked dinner and were all exhausted. After dinner, they had some free time. The kids had disappeared to play somewhere. Miali sat on the grass by the lake, gazing at the rippling green water in the twilight, the evening breeze sweeping away her weariness. A can of beer was handed to her. From the faint smell of disinfectant, she knew it was from Sean Yujo. Thank you, Miali said, taking the beer. The beer was chilled, and she felt a refreshing coolness as she drank it. She finished the can in one go and let out a burp. She turned and found Sean Yujo watching her. What's wrong? 
Haven't you seen a woman drink like that before? Miali asked with a hint of amusement. Facing the lake and leaning against the mountain, Shang Yujo's gaze was somewhat diluted by the vast space and twilight. Miao Li, fully enjoying the moonlight and breeze, felt her emotional intelligence drop. I'm single too, Shang Yujo said seriously, emphasizing the word too. He was determined to clarify the topic, and tonight seemed like the best opportunity. Yes, your son mentioned that. Miao Li replied casually, picking up another can of beer, opening it with a pop, and taking a sip. She looked at Shang Yujo with some confusion. So what? Shang Yujo was taken aback, as if he had missed a step. His earlier confidence from the car was shattered by Miao Li's indifferent attitude. Nothing, Shang Yujo said, taking a large gulp of beer, the cold liquid mixed with a hint of disappointment sliding down his throat. With such a clear hint, if she didn't respond, it must be his own delusion. The pride of middle age is sometimes very fragile, and the decision to pursue or give up can happen in an instant. Shang Yujo decided not to bring up the topic again. The silence between them grew awkward. Miao Li was satisfied with Shang Yujo's reaction. Hugging her knees and burying her head in her arms, she shivered slightly and after a moment, stifled a laugh. When she looked up at Shang Yujo, her playful expression was immediately understood by him. He exclaimed, You're teasing me. Why? Only you can tease others. Miao Li laughed, reveling in her triumph. Shang Yujo couldn't hold back anymore. He reached out to grab Miao Li, and as she tried to escape, he tackled her to the ground. The two middle-aged people rolled around on the grass, their bodies warmed by the moonlight and the breeze after a day in the cool air. In her twenties, Miao Li, usually composed in front of her reserved husband, Ken Wei, now felt like a little girl in front of the open and enthusiastic Shang Yujo. But no matter what, this was her true self. Love in middle age lacks the dreamy quality of youthful romance. But thanks to their life experience, they can avoid spinning aimlessly in that haze, mainly because they don't have the time to waste. Generally speaking, a few meetings and a couple of days together are enough to determine mutual feelings. In middle-aged love, initial attraction is important, but compatibility is key. This is why Miao Li and Shang Yujo decided to pursue their relationship. However, they agreed to keep their relationship private for now, unsure how Ken Xiaoxian and Shang Dalyang would react and whether they might run away from home again. Their strategy was simple, subtle influence. From then on, whenever both families were free on weekends, Miao Li and Shang Yujo used family trips as an excuse to take Ken Xiaoxian and Shang Dongliang on short trips. They would arrive at a countryside and on Friday evening, stay overnight, hike in the scenic areas on Saturday, and return home on Sunday. Ken Xiaoxian and Shang Dongliang's relationships with each other, and with Shang Yujo and Miao Li, improved significantly. They went from referring to each other as classmates' dad and classmates' mom, to Uncle Shang and Aunt Miao. On Friday evenings at the Countryside Inn after dinner, it was time for the kids to do their homework. At the small dining table, Ken Xiaoxian explained math problems to Shang Dongliang, occasionally tapping his forehead with a pencil, accompanied by Shang Dongliang's complaints. Why is this so hard? Why are there so many? In the living room, Miao Li and Shang Yujo pretended to watch TV, initially maintaining a formal distance. As the evening progressed, and there was no sign of the kids, their shoulders gradually touched, fingers intertwined, and their heads would sometimes inadvertently lean towards each other, only to quickly separate when the kids entered the room. Time passed quickly, and two months went by in the blink of an eye. This Sunday, Shang Yujo was on duty. Miao Li arrived at the hospital near his work to have breakfast with him. During breakfast, he brought up the topic of revealing their relationship to the kids for the third time recently. Why do you keep bringing this up? I've said we should wait. Miao Li said, resting her forehead on her hand, irritated. After staying up late to review drafts, she had rushed over to have breakfast with Shang Yujo and didn't want to hear him nagging about this issue so early in the morning. I know you're tired from working late, but if we were together, you wouldn't have to run around all the time, right? Shang Yujo said, gently touching Miao Li's hand. You keep saying that, but it's the same issue, Miao Li said, impatiently pulling her hand away. She didn't like the pressure he was putting on her because the issue itself was already a heavy burden on her mind. I know you're worried about Xiao Xian, about her becoming distant from you, but she's grown up now, she's 13 and so understanding. She'll understand us, Shang Yujo said, frowning and trying to explain patiently. Miao Li's voice rose, 
That's exactly why. She's too understanding, she wouldn't want to trouble anyone, and she wouldn't talk about her grievances. Xiao Xian had only run away from home two months ago, and that time, she had left with Shang Dongliang. Miao Li shuddered at the thought of what might have happened if the boy hadn't been there. What should we do then? Keep sneaking around just to have breakfast. Shang Yuzhou's voice also grew louder. Just wait a bit longer. Shang Yuzhou suddenly stood up. I don't think you're serious about being with me, he said, turning and leaving. Miao Li sighed in resignation. She knew that this matter couldn't be delayed any longer, or it would affect her relationship with Shang Yuzhou. So, at lunch, she cautiously broached the topic of Shang Yuzhou. Xiao Xian, what do you think of Uncle Shang? He's great. I like him a lot, Can Xiao Xian said, half-heartedly eating while watching a video. Well, Miao Li bit her lip, choosing her words carefully. What if mom and Uncle Shang were together? Mom, Ken Xiao Xian suddenly screamed. What's wrong? This is Uncle Shang's hospital, right? Ken Xiao Xian said, covering her mouth, her face filled with terror. Miao Li grabbed the phone to see the video. A middle-aged man with a knife was being restrained by security, with blood everywhere. Was she about to lose Shang Yuzhou, just like she lost Kenwei? Miao Li's heart raced as memories of Kenwei's car accident from a few years ago suddenly resurfaced. She picked up her phone to call Shang Yuzhou, but her hands were shaking so violently that she could barely hold it. Mom, let me call, Ken Xiaoxian offered, but despite repeated attempts, no one answered. Miao Li trembled all over, as if she were alone in a stormy night, gripped by the haunting memories of years past. She looked at Ken Xiaoxian with an unprecedented fear in her eyes. Let's go, we need to get to the hospital, now. Miao Li tried to stand, but collapsed in despair, tears streaming down her face, without warning. Ken Xiaoxian had never seen her mother so vulnerable. Even when her father died and she had a miscarriage years ago, Miao Li had remained strong, comforting Ken Xiaoxian through it all. In that moment, Ken Xiaoxian realized that her mother needed her. Mom, we'll go to the hospital right away. Ken Xiaoxian remained remarkably calm and collected. She helped Miao Li, grabbing the phone and keys, and they went downstairs to catch a cab. She communicated with the driver, assisted Miao Li out of the car and into the hospital, asking for Dr. Shang. The nurse only said that Dr. Shang was in the operating room and hurried away. The hospital was chaotic, and no one could provide specifics. Ken Xiaoxian helped Miao Li sit on a blue bench outside the operating room, holding her shoulder, just as Miao Li used to do for her. Two hours later, the operating room door opened. Ken Xiaoxuan's eyes lit up, and she excitedly called out, Uncle Shang. Tears welled up instantly. She wiped her eyes and excitedly shouted to Miao Li, Mom, it's Uncle Shang. He's okay, he's okay. Shang Yuzhou removed his mask and approached, looking apologetic as he crouched in front of Miao Li, holding her hand. I'm sorry. A colleague was injured, and the situation was critical. I didn't have time to notify you. Tears streamed down Miao Li's face as she collapsed into Shang Yuzhou's embrace, sobbing uncontrollably. Ken Xiaoxian, now allowing herself to cry as a child would, complained, Uncle Shang, Mom was so scared, and I was too. Shang Yuzhou's eyes grew moist as well. He hadn't anticipated that this mother and daughter would be so distressed for him. He wiped Ken Xiaoxuan's tears and gently patted her head like a father to his daughter, choked with emotion as he said, Xiaoxian, you did really well. Ken Xiaoxian recalled Miao Li's words at the dinner table, what if mom and uncle Shang were together? In her heart, Ken Xiaoxian had already given her answer, mom, I'm willing and I hope you find happiness.